Frankfurt High School is proud to bring you episode 9 of the Tradition of Excellence. This month's interview brings you Frankfurt alumni David Santos from class of 2012. This Tradition of Excellence is longer than the normal programming, but it is well worth the watch. In this Tradition of Excellence, David enlightens us about the importance of persistence and effort, about managing time and doing what you love. Here is a story that I believe speaks to the hearts of many young and older people. David shows us his way of valuing these things with great detail, and I hope you enjoy this tradition of excellence, like me. Hey, Hot Dogs, my name is Cesar Mendoza. Thanks for joining us here on the Hot Dog Network for episode nine of Traditional Tradition of Excellence with Hot Dog graduate class of 2012, David Santos. Hey, how's it going? No, pretty good. <laughs> What were you involved with in high school? What have you done since high school? And maybe how did high school prepare you for what has come? So in, in high school, um, I did a couple of sports. I did soccer four years, baseball two years. I think that's about it. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, but I was also a little bit involved. Uh, I did National Honor Society. Um, I went through Project Stepping Stone with uh, a teacher here in, in, in high school. Um, uh, well, after high school, um, I was accepted to Indiana State where I was going to go for business. Um, but the uh, medical reasons or medical bills impeded that. Uh, I ended up uh, going to Ivy Tech because it was a cheaper, cheaper route. Um, at Ivy Tech, I ended up switching from business to uh, mechanical engineering technology. Uh, business was a little boring. And my brother was already doing mechanical engineering technology. And he had advised me that uh, they had a couple of interesting classes like welding and material science, which was a little bit more of my interest. Um, uh, after that, I went to Purdue for, uh, to finish out my bachelor's, where I, I got the opportunity to go to Germany. I ended up going for a spring semester uh, to Munich, Germany. But the experience itself was, was amazing. You know, I, I, I got to travel around uh, Europe a little bit. I went to uh, Prague to Amsterdam to Italy to France uh, so it was, it was a really unique experience that I would have never imagined myself doing you know I remember telling my parents I was like hey I was, I'm going to go to Germany and they're like oh okay you know they were, they were supportive but they didn't they didn't even expect me to to do something that that crazy and I was always you know a bit uh, adventurous so it was uh, it was it was something great that I, that I think I I, uh, I value for doing. Um, again, uh, after that, I or after that, I came back, graduated 2016, um, took a job 2017 at Subaru, which uh, was my first job. I just applied to different places, and I was I was lucky enough to have a, a classmate who was already at Subaru. He showed my uh, my resume, uh, which you know. Uh, showed all my volunteer work, all my extracurricular activities, and others that I didn't mention. Like uh, during Ivy Tech, I, I started doing a, 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 what do you call it, an internship uh, at, a, at a local place in Lafayette. It was called Fairfield Orlicon, but now it's uh, Donna. There I was, uh, I was helping the maintenance uh, engineering department uh, do preventive maintenance uh, manuals, uh, doing a lot of 3D modeling, uh, and I started a lot of 3D design there with like lifting jigs and, and got myself involved and, and kept asking for more work because I wanted to learn. Um, and then, like I said, back to now, uh, I, I went to Subaru uh, in 2017 and I've been there since then. So roughly five, five and a half years. Um, and I've enjoyed it. It's, 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 it's fun most of the time. You know, it's still work, but... Uh, something enjoyable. Yeah, something enjoyable. Yeah. If you can go back to your 16-year-old self, what would you tell yourself? Keep your eyes open uh, and keep interests open. Uh, a lot of people shut themselves off from opportunities because they don't try things. Uh, they get in their little groups and their friends. And, you know, you know, it's nice to go out to Quinceañera or to, you know, have fun. Yeah. But a lot of people shut themselves off from mentors, from people that have that you know, input to your life that can that can give you and take you places. Um, so, you know, try new things. You know, I, I took French 
and I ended up, you know, like when I went to Paris, I was like, oh, you, I can speak a little French, you know, thank you, you're welcome, whatever. Yeah, but I background. think it's just keeping an open minded and, and realizing that there's there's a whole world out there. It's not just your friends that are, you know, like I said, have fun, but and participate, yeah. like live a little bit. You know, just the weekends aren't everything. There's always something to do and something else. You know, I, right now, one of my biggest regret, regrets is not doing wrestling because I, I like wrestling. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'm, I, I want my son to do wrestling. And I should have done it. Like, I, I was just like, I didn't, I didn't want to wear the tight clothes. And that was the only reason. You know, but I... In, in France, did you have any, like, any, like, sh struggles there when it came to it? Like, did you have, no, like, a translator? No, not really. I mean, in Europe, everybody speaks English. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's common. So... I know everybody's like, oh, we're going to a whole new world. I mean, it is, it is, it is impolite to start busting out English, but uh, the Europeans really like when you start and try to approach them in their native language. That makes them more comfortable and kind of opens them up to being more polite. Uh, we have a bad stereotype of going to other countries and being ignorant and loud. Yeah. And, you know, if you come with, especially like in Germany, uh, I was always trying to approach everybody uh, trying to speak and say hi in Germany uh, in German uh, so that that made it made it the you know the conversation a little bit more pleasant did you have any unsuspected like mentors from different countries uh, not really like mentors as, as far as like throughout my education career uh, no just uh, uh, like at Ivy Tech there was Yvonne Hernandez and Claudia uh, they were mentors, but Claudia's Colombian, Ivan's Mexican-American. Uh, at Purdue, I had a, uh, a mentor, a uh, graduate mentor, and he was from Texas. So most of, like, I don't know, it's not just because they were Hispanic that I uh, went towards them, it's just like the people that were around me a little bit. Um, but I mean, I participated with other graduate students, like uh, Asian students at Purdue. Uh, so just, I, I, I talked to everybody. No matter what, just you're like a friendly guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a little social, and I try to take in from everybody. You know, I like being, I like talking to everybody, especially like older, more experienced individuals. Uh, there's always something to take from them. For engineering, was it like rough transitioning between business to engineering? Not really, because it was a uh, after my first semester. So my first semester, uh, I think most of my classes, and not all of them, transferred because uh, most of the beginning classes you take in college are your core classes, English, writing, uh, college algebra, et cetera. So I was really lucky that, you know, it was after my first semester. But I know a lot of people that transfer even their sophomore year, uh, junior year, and they're still fine. Uh, sometimes they do have to uh, stay in longer uh, because of that. but. You know, it's for me personally, it wasn't it wasn't that difficult. So when it came to having that, more you know, Hispanic that bilingual knowledge, was it easier to um, was it to learn like new languages with that background knowledge? I think it helps, uh, especially like French, uh, French and Portuguese. I mean, even Italian. Like I was in Italy and I could understand most of the conversation when they spoke in Italian, because uh, that. Uh, root of the Latin language, you know, is separate or has a lot of commonalities between those languages. Uh, the German, not so, not so much. Uh, I mean, it was, it was pretty tough. I didn't, I mean, I'm fluent in German, but I, I, I can speak a little bit. Uh, but no, it just, just depends. But I think learning the two languages I've read, that does help your brain develop uh, an easier way or an easier understanding of languages and not just that, other, uh, other subjects. I think it's a, it's a plus being bilingual. <laughs> yeah. And um, for your, like childhood, would you like to share any like common struggles that other people might have here in school? Well, you know, growing up in a in a Mexican immigrant family, you know, I, I got here when I was seven. Um, back then, it wasn't uh, as populated with Hispanics here. I remember being bullied because I would speak Spanish. Uh, I remember this kid. I still I don't want to mention his name, but he would follow us when I was, I was in middle school. He would follow us every day 
and just blurt out, you know, mean things. And it was, I could never f figure out why he would do it. I mean, I knew he was just because we were, we were different. And I don't blame him, you know, he, he, was, he was young and ignorant. Uh, but you get that. Um, but it kind of helped me understand that there was, you know, there's people like that. But all you, you can't take that as a crutch. You can learn from it and, and like understand that people have different ways of thinking and taking the, the higher ground or the higher uh, yeah. understanding that, you know, it, it's okay. Yeah. People have the right to be wrong. Um, and I don't hate him from, for it. Um, kind of made me stronger, made me able to help, especially now, with the disagreements between some of my coworkers, I'm more calm and respecting. Uh, it helps me uh, stay level-headed. Uh, another thing was just, you know, again, the, the language. My parents spoke no English. They still, to this day, can somewhat understand it. So it was difficulty. It was difficult, you know, going to school. Um, they had no idea. Like, all, all, all the things that I had to ask, I had to ask somebody else. Uh, my parents didn't save money for college, so whenever I needed money, it was them, like, you know, digging up their savings. Uh, I remember one time I forgot to fill my FAFSA, and or there was something something wrong with m my FAFSA or my tuition, and my dad, you know, had to dig up 2000 bucks just to, to cover for that semester. Um, that and, you know, just, just the, the living day or living paycheck to paycheck since they worked in a factory, it was tough to, to know, you know, to, to ask for money or to, I mean, I never did ask for money, but it was, it was, it was tough, tough to ask or come home and say, hey, you know, I got this problem and I need $2,000. <laughs> so, uh, and that's why, I, I, you know, I, I, I love my family and I, I appreciate all they did. And, and a lot of the things that I do now is to, to, to help them. Yeah. Yep. Dude. Okay, this is a bit personal, but do you ever feel guilty about asking those type of questions? Like, well, like I said, I didn't, I didn't, I'm, I didn't get home and say, "Hey, I need two thousand bucks." I was like, "Hey, I messed up. Uh, I don't know what happened with my FAFSA." Uh, and at that time, I was working, so I had you know a couple hundred saved up. I've always been very diligent about my money, and and I'm not a big spender. I mean, I, I like to buy myself whatever I need, and sometimes. Uh, little things that I don't need, but uh, you know, it was it. It is tough, you know, taking money, especially knowing that they don't have the resources, and that it's you know those two thousand bucks were probably their savings from a year or two, you know, that they m would have used for something, you know, to f add something to the house or or so you know it was tough, but. You know, I take that into consideration now, and if my dad needs something, like, he's got it. Like, you know, like, yeah. so learning from that and, and, and knowing what your parents gave you or what, what they gave me has been, you know, one of my biggest fuels to, to keep going and to, to keep growing. Yeah, as, as we go. And um, when it comes to, like, high school and college and stuff, how could you say that the better education has helped you out through life? Well, it opens doors. I mean, uh, a lot of people think that, you know, you can go out right now and get 20 bucks an hour in a lot of factories around around the city, around around here. Um, and a lot of people think that that's enough. And it can't be enough for a certain amount of people or for certain people. You know, if you just want you know, a decent house, a nice car, yeah, you can you can make a living. But... To be more and to get more and to experience more, you need more, more wealth. The only way you can generate wealth is to earn more, right? Yeah. The way to earn more, you have to know more. You have to have invaluable skills, skills that a lot of people don't have. And education is that. You know, you can you can grow and have a business. Like you can you can get out of high school and open up a construction business. Not really. You need to experience. You need to go out there and experience and learn. And either you learn it in real life or you go to college and learn it. You can be great without going to college, but college is almost like a jump ahead. 
I know the first four years you're not going to earn anything. And sometimes you even can go in debt because some people will have to take loans. But that doesn't matter because once you get out of college, you're earning above a lot of people. It's, it's, and it depends, you know. I don't want to say that liberal arts degrees aren't good because they can be if, if you apply yourself and you, you know, take all the knowledge and apply yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's certain degrees that give you an edge up. And that's just because of the demand. Right now, there's a high demand in engineers. So demand equals, you better know, pay. better pay. So yeah. it just depends. But yeah, education is, is, is key. Yeah. So it's not like really, it's not a guarantee, but it's a major help when it comes yeah, to everything. Yeah, it's nothing's guaranteed in life. Uh, yeah. That's something that a lot of people don't understand. Like just because you're in this country doesn't mean you're guaranteed, you know, Ferraris and what you see in, in Instagram. Yeah. You have to work for it. A lot of people think that, oh, I can make a TikTok video and go viral and all of a sudden become famous and earn all this money. Uh, you can't. Like, I mean, it's work for a fraction percent of the population. It's, you know, I, I don't, don't expect that to happen to you. Yeah. I don't expect anything to happen to you. You have to go out there and earn it and work for it. When it comes to people trying to choose between college and stuff, like, what would you recommend personally? I can't say, well, personally for me, I mean, college gave me that step up, like I said before, um, because I already had a work ethic uh, and like I already valued education while I was here. I mean, I wasn't an A student and I, I slacked off in a lot of classes. Like I wasn't, you know, 4.0 every day doing the best. I also had fun. You know, I would go to football games, enjoy myself. I would you can I already valued fun, education, right? so I already valued education, so that made it easy for me to go to college and structure myself where I would go and do my homework when I had to do my homework. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, professors, they don't ask you. It's like, hey, you, you come in and you turn in your homework. And in high school, it's like, hey, do you have your homework? Do you have your homework? Everybody's always on you. Uh, so I already had that mentality that I wanted to learn. Uh, so they made it easy for me to just go to college and, and keep learning, keep growing. Um, a lot of people struggle with that. They're not structured, they're not, uh, they don't have that um, mindset. Mindset or, yeah, yeah, they don't have that mindset. So they, they struggle with applying themselves and, because once you're, you're in college, you're, you're away. You're, you know, your parents aren't there, your teacher aren't there. You can go to parties every day of the week. And a lot of people struggle with that. Discipline, that's the word. I think I had the discipline to tell myself, hey, you're not gonna go to this party today because it's Wednesday night and you have to do homework for tomorrow. Or for me, it was I was already working, so I was doing my internship while I was still at Purdue. Mm -hmm. So I had to wake up at four, five in the morning or four in the morning, go to work, then go to class. Then after class, I had a homework. And then after that, sleep because I had maybe five, six hours to get on some, get some sleep. So I had the discipline to go to college. And if you don't tell yourself that you have to do the work, you're not going to, you're not, you're just going to waste that money. Uh, and it's expensive. So yeah, <laughs> I think that, you know, a lot of kids can go into the real world and get a job and learn skills and keep growing that way but it takes discipline and if you don't have the mindset and the goals you know it's, it's gonna be hard yeah and um for personally i live like basically in a one one parent household and all, for people that are struggling like that what what would you tell them like something to inspire on uh, it's hard. Um, I mean, I bet it's harder, way harder than what I had. I think all you can do is just uh, make that your fuel. Like, you know, I bet your mom probably works every day to give you as much as you can. And you can't give, you can't throw that away by not giving it your best. 
because you got her to fight for or you got her to help. So, I mean, it's hard, but all you can do is just keep going. You know, the biggest thing that, or the biggest mistake you can do is just giving up just because you think it, you have it harder than somebody else. There's always somebody that has it harder than you. So you use them as like a, a motivation? Your fuel. Yeah, motivation, fuel. Mm -hmm. And then there's always help. Like, you know, if your mom can't, you know, provide you the, the knowledge or she doesn't understand how to go to college, there's counselors, there's, there's more people. I mean, you could, I'll give you my number and, you know, if you have any more questions after this, I can, I can help you out. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to help. I mean, there's scholarships, there's, but finan other than financially, there's so many people willing to help you just because there's really good people out there that want people to succeed. Because we need engineers, we need nurses, we need people to be educated and hungry to, to be successful Sorry. in our community, especially here. You know, Frankfurt's growing, so we need individuals that can keep this place growing. And help build it. Yeah. So all you gotta really do is just ask. <laughs> well, thank you guys for being here for this episode nine of Tradition of Excellence. Till next time, this is Caesar Mendoza. <laughs>